recently, Russia tested its Sarmat, Satan II ICBM, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. If such ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads are fired hypothetically at Russia, can the defense systems such as the S-400 or the Patriot intercept them? And if they did such high-yield missiles, what could would be the impact in air as the warhead would explode? And do you think radiation would spread? Okay, let's first take the second part of the question. Let's say you have a nuclear missile that's incoming and you take it out with an anti-missile missile. Let's say with the S-400 system or some other missile defense system. India has its own indigenous uh, anti-missile systems like the Prithvi air defense system and so on. So it's like shooting a bullet with a bullet. That's what it's like. So let's say you have an inter incoming intercontinental ballistic missile. What, a, what an ICBM does or any ballistic missile does is that it first goes out of the Earth's atmosphere, goes on a ballistic trajectory, which is essentially a projectile motion, a parabolic path, and then it re-enters the atmosphere and then it comes towards the destination, whatever the target is. <clears throat> so that's what a ballistic missile is like. So when it re-enters the atmosphere, that's when you can intercept it when you know where it's uh, heading towards. It depends on what sort of range your missiles, your missile defense system has, what is the readiness and so on and so forth. But let's say you take one of these incoming missiles out, you destroy it. Now, this incoming missile is a nuclear missile, let's say. It has a nuclear warhead. So when you destroy the incoming nuclear missile, will there be a nuclear explosion? No. Most likely, it won't. There won't be a nuclear explosion. There is something called a fuse on a nuclear warhead, and it typically detonates. And the nuclear warhead on a missile, incoming ballistic missile, typically detonates at a certain altitude or on impact. And the, there are certain characteristics of the impact that would trigger a detonation. Most probably, it would be something that is a proximity kind of thing, maybe 100 meters above when the altitude is, is 100 meters or maybe half a kilometer or whatever, whatever you programmed into it. So that's what it takes for a nuclear explosion to happen and for the warhead's nuclear device to be triggered. Most likely, when you take out a nuclear missile, which is incoming in midair, you would typically do it, it at an altitude of 50 kilometers or 20 kilometers if you're, or something like that, something like that. So in that case, most likely there will not be a nuclear explosion. It will just be destroyed and the warhead will fall somewhere or maybe it will break open and then and the materials inside may, may spill out into the atmosphere. So that is the most likely scenario. Maybe, maybe there even may be a nuclear blast in case it is programmed that way, in which case the nuclear explosion will take several kilometers up in the air and it will not have a significant impact on the target site. Let's say you have a nuclear blast 10 kilometers in the air or 20 kilometers high up in the air. There will be almost no fallout on the ground. There will be a cloud of radioactive debris and all that. It will dissipate across the atmosphere and it will lead to, well, the kind of situation you had when the Tsar Bomba was detonated. So the Russians, they detonated this enormous nuclear bomb, the Tsar Bomba. I think it was in the 50s or 60s, most likely somewhere around that time. And this 50 megaton nuclear warhead was detonated maybe a few kilometers in the air. I'm not sure what height it was at, but maybe let's say, let's say hypothetically 10 kilometers or five kilometers, whatever it was. So it exploded in mid air and then it, it uh, created a, ma a massive mushroom cloud. But the fallout, the radioactive fallout was very less on the ground. It was negligible. Of course, there was radioactive fallout in the atmosphere, but that's a different story. So it, if a nuclear warhead explodes in midair, a few kilometers above the ground, it will not have much of an effect on the target site. That's what happens. So uh, now about the Sarmat ICBM, that's say super heavy ICBM. It's a double, it's, it has at least two stages. The first stage, I believe, is a solid solid fueled stage. And the, the second stage or whatever it is, or third stage, whatever it is, is a liquid fueled stage. And it has a very, very long range. It can essentially hit any target in the world. Uh, so that's what it is. Now, can a defense system such as the S-400 or the Patriot system intercept it? 
the thing about the sarmat is is that it is an enormous missile it's a super heavy missile it has a very long range and it is a mirv missile multiple independent reentry vehicles which means that a single missile would carry maybe 10 or 12 uh, thermonuclear warheads and each of these warheads would be pro- will be programmed to hit a dif- different destination a different target so the missile goes up into the atmosphere it goes out of the atmosphere goes into 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 space out of space then it re-enters the atmosphere and while re-entering it it's uh, uh it releases the 10 12 15 whatever warheads it is carrying and each of these warheads goes into a different goes to a different destination and sometimes you may even have a maneuverable maneuvering uh gliding warhead that would go to a destination but it would go through a zigzag path so it's very hard to intercept right so that is the advantage of having mirv technology multiple independent reentry vehicles or i think that's what the acronym stands for so when you have that sort of a thing it's really hard to intercept that you will essentially have to either destroy the incoming missile very high in the atmosphere before it releases its uh, warheads or you would have to go after each warhead independently let's say it releases 15 warheads or 12 warheads each of which is a thermonuclear weapon and each of these guys goes in different directions it may be each of these guys may be maneuvering in a certain way it makes it really really hard to intercept really hard now the s400 system may possibly able be able to take out uh these mirv warheads possibly i think it's able to uh, target multiple incoming uh, uh, bogies at the same time so it is certainly possible that the s400 may be able to take it out there's a newer more advanced version of the of the system called the s500 there's even talk about a s550 so these are progressively better iterations of the system the previous one was called the s300 so uh, there's always a likelihood that even the best system may miss some of the incoming missiles or warheads because none of these systems is guaranteed to be 100% accurate it has a small error margin and uh, the s400 is as of today most likely the best available system the patriot system is not quite as good neither is the israeli iron dome system so i think if you want to if you are a betting person if you would like to bet then your bets should be on the s400 system because i think the s400 system has the best possible chance of stopping an incoming uh, nuclear attack even if it is an mirv system i believe it's able to take out it's able to deal with mirv warheads as well so if you want to bet you should bet on the s400 